So, Marvel Studios has finally unveiled, uh, like fully unveiled this film. Uh, they did it on Valentine's Day with, as you can see here, some really fun artwork. Um, and it seems to reinforce that this is going to be uh, set in the 1960s. Um, you can see the thing holding a Life magazine um, copy with LBJ on the cover. And that was, was the actual Life magazine cover uh, from December of 1963. Um, and, you know, um, I have a couple sources here. So you have Kotaku noting that, you know, this 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 change could be really novel for the MCU, right? Um, you know, it's IGN also notes it's not an origin story or it's not going to be an origin story. And IGN also notes that because of this, it's completely more like, if it were to be said in the 60s, it would be more or less completely free from most of the MCU mythology. Like, obviously you can't, you wouldn't be able to include something that would then contradict something that would come later. But in terms of like a narrative, you don't have to worry about what happened in, with this character eight movies ago, right? You could really tell, for all intents and purposes, a more original, initially self-contained story that could then kind of expand expand out, right? Um, but the biggest part of this, like we already knew this movie was coming. We knew that the 60s was rumored to be like the time period of, of the film. And again, this isn't confirmed. It just seems like all these indications with like the art style and like the font feels very reminiscent of like, I think someone noted it's very like reminiscent of like those 60s Cinerama um, advertisements. Um, the thing with the, the 1963 Life magazine. Um, so that's not even confirmed, but that seems, we've already kind of known that that was the rumor. Um, but the big announcement here is officially locking in the cast. Um, and also to be fair, most of these people had been rumored uh, for these roles for, for a while now. Um, but let's kind of just go through, um, the four, this, this, uh, fab, the fab four, the fabulous foursome here. So we got Pedro Pascal as Mr. Fantastic, obviously Pedro Pascal, huge star on the Mandalorian and the last of us. Um, and he's been rumored for a while and he was actually, um, fairly credibly reported to be playing the role back in November. Um, you know, and in the other characters, um, or the, excuse me, the other actors that I'm about to mention, um, Hollywood Reporter also notes that wh while Pedro Pascal's uh, involvement in the role was pretty much more or less confirmed back in November, all of these other actors had been swirling around in the rumor sphere uh, for quite some time. So billing, filling out the rest of the cast, you have Vanessa Kirby as the Invisible Woman. Um, her, her more recent credits being she was in Napoleon, um, as Josephine, she was also in the new Mission Impossible movie. Um, she received an Oscar nomination for her film, for um, the film she was in, Pieces of a Woman. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I, I haven't seen any of those films. Um, so I can't really say one way or the other how I feel about this casting. I mean, it, maybe this is a little wishful thinking. And I guess you do get this with Pedro Pascal, but like, it's a little disappointing to see, like, a very, like, kind of conventional choice for the Invisible Woman, like a very light-skinned, white, blonde woman. Um, especially after we had Jessica Alba in the role, who, you know, maybe, forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn, but was, like, a little bit white-passing. Like, I didn't realize she was even Hispanic until I was, like, a teenager or older. Like, as a kid, I just assumed she was white. Um, but it is a little disappointing to see this character that was, at a time... Um, was cast as, you know, a, a not not a, just a conventional blonde white woman. Um, again, it's a little bit offset by the fact that you have Pedro Pascal in, like, that more or less leading role. Um, but still, it is just a little disappointing. But um, in terms of other characters, we have The Thing. Um, play. He's going to be played by um, e Eben. I, I've, I've heard, like, 12 different pronunciations of every part of this guy's name. So apologies, apologies if I mispronounce, but Eben Moss Backrack um, as The Thing. Um, he's been... His star has really been rising over the past couple of years, particularly on TV, um, notably The Bear. Um, he was on Andor, the Disney Plus show. Um, I believe he was also on the limited series The Dropout, um, the Hulu one with Amanda Seyfried as Elizabeth Holmes. He was like a reporter that kind of, one of the many people who kind of breaks the whole thing open. Um, he's going to be the thing. And if you see in this picture here, um, you know, because you can see they're all, all, they're all like drawn as the actors, right? Um, but the thing is just the thing, but you could see behind the thing um, a portrait of pre-thingified thing, right? As when he's just Ben Grimm. Um, and that's, and that's, um, Eben Moss backcrack. So, um, you have him as well. And then rounding out the team, you have Joseph Quinn as the human torch who, um, was on Stranger Things. I've only seen the first two seasons of Stranger Things because it kind of 
fell off for me um, personally, but I believe he's kind of shows up later um, in the run of the series. Um, I know some people have been complaining because like, he's not hot enough, you know, because we had Chris Evans as the Human Torch. Then we had Michael B. Jordan as the Human Torch, and and he's you know just as hot as his as his flame powers, as his devilishly good looks, right? And people are saying like Joseph Quinn's kind of like a dweeb, um, but I think I think there's room for you know any actor can be hot. I firmly believe this. Any actor can be hot. It's about the way, it's about personality, charisma, and a lot of it is also costuming, hairstyling, the the filmmaking elements themselves. So, you know, I'll reserve judgment, but also I'm not sure if that's as integral of an element of that character for me as it might be for other people. Um, it also, uh, this announcement, as you can see, it also indicates the name change. Originally, it was just going to be Fantastic Four, and now it's THE Fantastic Four. Um, dubious if it's going to be uh, four, like F-O-R, F-O-U-R, or the number four. Um, I would have said the number if it was just Fantastic Four. But since it's THE Fantastic Four, I kind of want it to be uh, written out F-O-U-R. But it really does not matter. Um, so this is going to be releasing on July 25th, 2025. It was originally going to be May of that year, and it actually swapped release dates with another MCU movie coming out called Thunderbolts, which is kind of like, from what I understand, it's kind of like the MCU's version of like the Suicide Squad, where it's going to be all like the, the anti-heroes who are kind of grouped together to, to save the day or whatever and all that good stuff. So uh, it's going to be directed by Matt Shackman. Um, originally, this was going to be directed by John Watts. Um, who is the director of the three MCU Spider-Man films. Um, but he stepped away to go direct um, the Disney Plus Star Wars show Skeleton Crew that's reportedly featuring Jude Law. Who knows if that will end up even happening as we've seen Disney and Lucasfilm announce stuff and then can it and, you know, never goes anywhere. So, but ultimately I'm okay with this because... Um, John Watt, I, I don't particularly love those Spider-Man films. Um, I find his films to be super bland. And when he was announced to be the director of, of this film, I was a little disappointed because again, this is, and I'll talk about a little bit this, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but Fantastic Four is a real opportunity to kind of breathe some new life and originality into the MCU and in, into this franchise. And I just didn't think John Watts was the guy to do it. Um, Matt Shackman, his notable claims to fame, he directed um, all of the episodes of WandaVision, all nine episodes, which um, is probably one of the best elements post up, uh, like one of the best MCU things since end, like after Endgame, like once you move into like that post Endgame uh, era of the MCU. Um, and some would even say it's the best thing, right? So that's, you know, very reassuring if you really like WandaVision, which I, I, I liked quite a bit. Um, and he's also directed episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, um, Fargo, and Game of Thrones. So, and that's interesting because it really shows a wide range, right? Um, so again, it'll be interesting to see kind of how his vision is put, um, cause those are all television, right? So it'll be interesting to see how that, that translates to the big screen. Um, but this film has been highly anticipated, right? Again, there's been casting rumors for years, basically ever since, um, Disney bought Fox, right? Because if you're not aware, um... You know, a little history lesson for you. In the 90s, Marvel Comics was essentially bankrupt. So to make some, or to kind of increase some cash flow, they basically auctioned off or sold off all of the movie rights to all to a lot of their most popular characters to the highest bidder. So that's why when I was growing up like in the early 2000s, you have Sony making Spider-Man movies, you have Fox making, uh, what, what was it? X-Men and Fantastic Four and Daredevil. And then you have Universal with Hulk. Um, so you kind of see they were all kind of separated, right? And then Marvel Studios gets created because they're like, why don't we use the characters we still have the rights to and build a shared universe? And then eventually they were the rights at these other companies lapsed or in the case of Fox, Disney bought Fox, right? So ever since Disney bought Fox in, I think that sale officially went through in 2019, um, you know, people have been speculating on who the cast would be for this rebooted version, right? The big one for the longest time was John Krasinski and Emily Blunt would be Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, um, which I honestly was fantastic casting 10 years ago, right? It, it would not have worked now. You know, they, they had John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic as like a multiverse version of him in... Um, in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And that kind of went over lukewarm with people. Um, so, you know, it's interesting to kind of see see these characters finally cast, again, because people have been speculating about it forever. Um, THR notes that, you know, ultimately Fantastic Four is the comic that launched the Marvel 
a Marvel universe in the comic books, right? It was like the first, it was the first one in a sense. Um, and you know, before X Men, before Spider Man, before Hulk, before all of them, it was Fantastic Four. Um, you know, and and Teacher also notes, and and I, you know, a lot of people have bemoaned this. It's never been quite. It's never. It's never been done quite right on the big screen, right? Um, in fact, this will be the fourth version. It's basically almost every 10 years, they, they take another stab at this material. So in the mid-90s, you have the Roger Corman version, um, which was never released, um, which I did, though you can, I think you can find like a bootleg of it on YouTube. Um, and then there was the versions in the two thousand in the mid-2000s. Um, and then in 2015, you have Fan Four Stick, right? Or the Fantastic Four, um, directed by Josh Trank, uh, with Miles Teller and Kate Mara and, uh, Michael B. Jordan, that was, like, considered one of the worst movies ever made. Um, and here we are, another about 10 years in the mid-2020s, we're gonna get another one. Um, this is really critical, right? This film, I think, is really critical for Marvel Studios. So, for context, the only MCU movie coming out this year is, uh, Deadpool 3, which is, which is, isn't even quite an MCU movie, right? Um, you know, the franchise has been in a creative rut since Endgame. Um, it just has not just, there have been a couple pockets of, of really, of, of acclaim, you know, like I said, like WandaVision has been pretty well received that first season of Loki. People quite like, I quite liked, uh, the Black Panther sequel. Um, but on the whole, it is just by metrics has not been as popular or successful or acclaimed, um, as anything in those first three phases of the MCU. Right. Um, so this is the opportunity to, because you know, because they were ultimately digging deeper and deeper into more obscure characters and plot lines and ideas, which are interesting, but weren't necessarily done super well. And then couple that with just like oversaturation, people are starting to get really tired of it. But this is now new. This is something that they've never been able to get their hands on until now, right? The Fantastic Four, like I, like like we were talking about within the comics, it is a premier property, right? And I really feel if if Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige can pull this movie off. Um, and however they're going to do X-Men. If they can pull that off, um, it could save the MCU, right? Um, which a lot of people are writing off as dead um, or soon to be dead. I'm of two minds about it. Um, but again, I think this could really this could really help, uh, to, say, to say the least. Um, and, like you, and, and I'm the only person who's thought this. You have, um, you know, an editorial piece from Matt. Um, I'm, please forgive me for mispronouncing. Matt. Um, Shimkovitz at AV Club um, with an editorial article headlined, quote, Fantastic Four could be the perfect chance to welcome back lapsed Marvel fans like me, end quote. Yeah, so again, this could really be an opportunity to get those people back who have kind of checked out of, of this franchise. Now, the question will be, will they take a big swing, right? That's probably the biggest complaint lodged against them, the MCU is that it all just feels very cookie cutter. Even its best output, it's just very samey, right? Fantastic Four has always been weird, right? It's always very cosmic. The, the movies that have been made haven't really shown this, but Fantastic Four has always been very colorful and weird and, and cosmic. And, you know, like one of their main villains is this giant planet eating monster named Galactus. And, you know, like, w will they take a big swing, right? If this is just more of the same, they've lost the plot. The whole game is lost, right? And I and then I think the more, I think the MCU will be dead. Um, But as of right now, we can just enjoy speculating about it because we won't know for at least a year.